Good morning, everyone. What a difference a day or a couple days made. It was funny, last week at work, guys and I were talking about what we're going to plant in our gardens. Some of the guys are going to start tilling this weekend and fertilize. Well, you wake up this morning and like, I know that didn't happen. <laughs> but I was sitting there thinking, you know, it brought to mind how sometimes, uh, well, this verse in the Bible, Proverbs 16, 9, it says, a man in his heart plans his own course, but God determines the steps. And that's so true in life today. Sometimes we forget to talk about God first, and we plan our own course. Just something to think about. This morning, we have a special guest, Janetta and her, and her wife, or her, her husband, Michael, are going to uh, share information about their native Ukraine. Please stay afterwards and join us in the Fellowship Hall for uh, some chatting. There's a few announcements this morning. In your bulletin, we have the uh, Easter flower order form. Please, uh, we only have one week. We'll have to have it back next Sunday. So uh, take a look at it if you want to order any. Give it, make sure Karen Root gets it. Also, uh, Sunday, April 3rd is the last day for the donation for the Easter candy for the uh, children's um, program. I have a card here. It says, thank you, everyone, for all the donation for Mission First during the spring luncheon. Thank you for the delicious food to all and, help, and the help cleaning up. God bless you, Patty and Colleen. <clears throat> Wednesday, join Judy Turner at 10 a.m. for the virtual coffee. You just go, go to our website and click on that little coffee cup, and it takes you right to uh, the, uh, web, or the uh, talks, the co virtual coffee talks. Also, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. is the community Lenten service. And this week it's at Temple UMC with Pastor Denny delivering the message. Thursday evening you can join the at 7 p.m. the Lenten book study. There's a link on the website also. You just click on the link. Please check the website for all the homeless ministry needs or contact Kathy Spohn or Carol Steyer or myself. Kathy's still collecting Easter cards for Kadima House. There's a box in the Fellowship Hall. And also there's a box for the Children's Candy Program. Also, there's a list out here in the, in the Fellowship Hall or in the, inside the door for all the needs for uh, Ukraine. Please take a look at that. Please continue to pray for all those on our prayer list. Please add Debbie and Harry Whited this morning. They're both having follow-up tests next week. Also, I talked to Janie Guest after her surgery, and uh, she's doing real well with her knee, but she actually uh, had a, a little loss in the family. Well, it's a large loss. Her grandson passed away uh, a few days ago, so please keep uh, her and, and the family in your thoughts and prayers. And also, please, she asked to limit the phone calls right now. Celebrating a birthday uh, tomorrow is Carol Nolan, and on Thursday, Don Woodland, and Friday, Katie Sue Rittenbaugh. Happy birthday to all. Does anyone have something they want to share this morning? Denise and I would like to thank uh, everyone. Denise and I would like to thank everyone for the uh, basket of fruit, the flowers, and the prayers. It's well or well appreciated. Thank you. You're very welcome, Jeff. Mike, the uh, list of things that are needed or for priority are on our, on our uh, website as well. Okay, thank you. Then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs>
us pray. Dear Lord, as we meet here today, please let us be filled with your Holy Spirit. Wherever we go, help us to spread your love, joy, peace, goodness, and faithfulness to all we meet. Help us, help us desire to become more like you and to worship you in all we do. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you always. Forgive us when we don't think enough of you for who you are, for, who, for what you do, and for all you have blessed us with. We pray for your grace to cover our lives this new day. We love and need you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Christ for the World We Sing. And it's 568 in your hymnals. <laughs> can be seated. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to you this morning as your people, spread out through the whole world, brothers and sisters. And in all of humanity, we come together and pray for the needs that we know of. We pray for those who grieve this morning, Lord. We pray for those who are hungry. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are anxious and worried. And particularly we think about the Ukraine, the great migration from the, community, from the country, and those who choose to stay behind to fight the invasion by a foreign country. We think about the, car, the, the, the rising tensions, not only there, but in our world, as threats of nuclear war are on the horizon. 
It's a troubling time we live in, Lord. And we pray for peace. Not only personal peace, Lord. And we need that. We need to know your presence in our lives and, that the, and have the assurance that we're yours. And for us, there's hope beyond earthly life. But hope of world peace, of peace between Russia and the Ukraine and the escalating tension. Peace for those individuals who leave their loved ones behind. Peace for those who are fleeing with babies and children. Peace for children whose routines have been upset. Peace and safety for medical workers, many of whom need bulletproof vests to be able to practice their particular ministry. And hope, where there seems to be no hope right now for a peaceful future and the rebuilding of the communities in Ukraine, as well as the relationships that are broken. And we pray for those countries to which refugees are going. And Lord, we recognize that Ukraine is not the only one who is providing refugees for the rest of the world. There are so many in refugee camps. We don't even know where they all are. But their lives have been disrupted. They live in terrible conditions in many cases. Food is always a question of the mercy of others. Lord, as your people, we pray your presence, your inspiration, your strength for us to do what's appropriate and necessary for those who suffer, no matter where they are or their ethnic origin. We come, Lord, in humility, and we come in assurance that you're with us, even when sometimes we wonder where you are. In all of it, Lord, we come to you and we now pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join me in, in saying what we believe, the affirmation of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is from James, the first chapter. You must be doers of the word, and not only hearers who misled them, mislead themselves. Those who hear, 
They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forget what they were like. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves. Their devotion is worthless. Again, I'd like to say we are so pleased to have Janetta Horbach with us and also her husband, Michael. And um, Janetta came to the United States in 1999 and from the Ukraine. And um, a few la years later, she came to uh, be involved with St. Mary's Shelter for the Homeless, where I also volunteer, and Janetta became part of the staff there for about 16 years. So we got to know each other pretty well. And um, oftentimes, Wednesday night was my night for being there, and oftentimes, Janetta was the staff person that night. So we got to share a lot of things during that time. Um, when the war broke out, uh, I was thinking of Janetta, so I had called her to see if her relatives were safe. And uh, we had quite a conversation, and she shared so many things with her. And I said to her, would you be willing to come and talk at Mount Carmel? And she said immediately, yes, she would. So I am so grateful that she's here, and I thank her, thank her ahead of time for all that I know that she'll share. Thanks, Janetta. Well, Janetta, it's really good to have you here. Thank you for taking the time. And we want to welcome you to Mount Carmel. We're grateful to have the opportunity to have you and your husband, Michael, with us. And a huge thank you to Kathy Spone, who shared this resource. When Kathy called me, um, I thought just a simple conversation after the service wasn't enough. But there's part of the needs of the world that we need to hear. And so I invited uh, Janetta uh, to do a dialogue with me, and that's what we're going to do this morning. Um, and uh, again, this will be available as normal on our, uh, on, through our website, but on our streaming website at YouTube. Uh, it'll be available in a cut form. The whole service will be available in a cut form. And then we'll take this, this section, this dialogue out, uh, and post it separately. Janetta, welcome. Thank you. It's an honor for me to be around you and have uh, this uh, great opportunity to talk about Ukraine, what's going on right now. Judy, are you making a noise or making a motion there that you're having difficulty hearing? Yes. Okay. We're going to have to put this right close to your face. <laughs> Some people would say kiss it, so... Say one, two, three. One, two, three. Well, uh, we... Let's see if we can do this, Marilyn. All right, let's try this one. Yes. Now, you're going to have to hold this one. Now, try. Give us another one, two, three. One, two, three. That's better. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> Jeanette, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, like uh, 
already Kathy th said that I came in uh, America 23 years ago. I had an opportunity to um, live here and uh, work and travel because I won a green card. It was a long time ago uh, when uh, I was born in the Ukraine when it was uh, under Ukraine under the Soviet Union. And uh, I uh, lived through all of this regime and knowing how it was dangerous to express your thoughts. It was dangerous for your parents, it was dangerous for your kids. You can be sent to Siberia for your not believing uh, in a uh, communist uh, uh, party. And uh, I uh, thought that um, this opportunity to see another world for me, I would like to use it. At first, I thought that okay, I will. Uh, I was a teacher at school uh, teaching uh, English language, and uh, I thought I need to improve my language. And uh, after that, I will go back to Ukraine t uh, and teach um, and continue teaching language at school. The situation in Ukraine, under the even when Ukraine became separate, uh, became worse and worse. It was the influence of a uh, Russian uh, communist, uh, it was a Russian government um, in the uh, economy of uh, Ukraine, also political life, uh, some political scandals. And I saw about this uh, corruption scandals and decided that the better life for me and my children uh, start to, uh, in America. But that was 23 years ago. Why did you stay? What, why, did you, why are you still here? Uh, the main reason is because my kids, uh, uh, they are here. They are right now in, a, in uh, studying in college and uh, university. I'm glad that uh, they found um, w what they like to do. And uh, the other, I uh, met a lot of good people that like my eyes became open that it's not exactly the way how you need to hide your beliefs and um, I decided to live here. Great, thank you. Now, you're talking, you still have relatives uh, in Ukraine? Yes. And you have I some have, friends there? Yes, I have relatives, friends with whom I grew up. They are right now there and uh, when I contacted them on a regular basis, right now, during the war, it's every day. None of them, they want to leave. They want to fight for Ukraine. They want to stay there to defend. It's amazing. Uh, it's only allowed to leave uh, mothers with children. And uh, I fr I'm from western part of Ukraine. And uh, people who are leaving the eastern part to Ukraine, going to the borders, they are having a, like a standpoint that they, they are standing in Lviv, the city where uh, they have opportunity to rest and uh, uh, going further if they want to, going, to go to European countries. Well, that's, uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, the news, you know, that we're hearing uh, from all the stations is pretty, uh, uh, pretty brutal. Uh, uh, so the news you're getting from, from Ukraine, uh, is it, does it confirm what we're seeing? I mean, we're here, uh, we hear from uh, Russian, uh, you know, news, uh, news outlets that, uh, uh, that there's really not a lot happening uh, and they're, 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 they're winning. Uh, and we hear in American uh, news outlets that, uh, uh, you know, cities are being destroyed, uh, residential neighborhoods being destroyed. Is it, so, so what do we believe? What, what's, what do you hear from your folks? Uh, correct. In America, you, s you can see on the TV all of this uh, truthful news, but uh, reality is worse. It's... Uh, um, I want to say that uh, Putin called this war special military operation. And in real, it's war. 
Putin controlled uh, Putin controls the media and uh, people who live in Russia if they against the Putin um, policy they uh, and protesting uh, they can go to the jail for 15 years um, government is controlled by the dictator Vladimir Putin and uh, also, I want to tell that uh, Facebook and Instagram are banned. It means who goes on Instagram in Russia or Facebook also can be in a jail for 15 years. Um, what's happening today by Russia? Uh, what is Nazi did in a World War II? Nazi bombed the city. Putin bombs the, the cities. Uh, Nazi were killing civilians and Putin killing civilians. Um, I think that um, you saw on the TV all of these reports. Um, well, thank you. Uh, I understand there's a lot of folks leaving. I hear millions of folks are leaving uh, Ukraine. Yes, it's already 10 million people uh, fled they left their houses and only three million left to the European countries. Uh, they, um, they are planning to come back. On an interview that I heard on a, a TV, um, all of them saying, when war finished, we will be back. And uh So, so the war really didn't start in February. Correct. When, well, when did it start? The war started uh, in 2014 when it was annexated, uh, Russia annexated uh, Crimea. It's a peninsula in the south of uh, uh, the country. And um, I think it, this is the worst war uh, what after the World War II and people defend uh, their country. They do everything to protect uh, the peaceful um, population. I understand that uh, uh, even women are staying behind and, and standing up for their freedom and protecting, Correct. Correct. protecting the country. Everybody, and men and women and uh, uh, high school children, for example, uh, what women, you asked me about women, what they doing. They uh, organized uh, uh, after uh, when uh, Bombard finished, they organized the checking neighbors, elderly person if they survive and if they need a help. Also they uh, organized to cook dinners for soldiers. Uh, usually um, it's uh, uh, where they organized to cook in their houses or in a church in a basement. Uh, also churches uh, also involved because they give a place for peaceful uh, population to hide because most of houses in villages, they, they were built without basement and the church is the safe place. Uh, how the pastors also helping them uh, to pray with the soldiers, to prepare them for uh, the battle uh, with the um, enemy. And uh, I want to also tell that uh, the women bringing their old and new uh, sheets, bed linens, uh, to, uh, it's one of the ingredients for Molotov cocktails. And they are uh, putting on a stri uh, cutting on the stripes uh, and uh, helping uh, to prepare them. Also, uh, high school children involved too. They collect empty bottles and bringing to the special centers where were organized uh, almost in every town to make a, a Molotov cocktails. Um, I will say that the brave, uh, how the brave is the country. Even people like uh, farmers, hunters, they 
organized was there who had a um, shovel uh, or uh, some uh, uh, garden equipment <laughs> and uh, also I will tell you why and uh, also uh, hunters with them with the, their uh, ruffles going uh, patrolling the uh, roads of the um, where tanks going because uh, these roads were marked by fluorescent paint and in the night time in the shape of the arrow you see the direction where to go and uh, this uh, brave man's uh, farmers hunters etc they covered this signs with the dirt not to be visible so uh, the, the the roads were directional signs were pasted or posted on the road by not by ukrainians or by spies or russians uh, uh, it's a uh, they made uh, by russian spies why because the f the first day of the war all of these road signs that showing the name of the city, how many kilometers uh, to reach, they were dissembled by um, uh, Ukrainians. And uh, uh, Russian soldiers didn't know where to go because Google Maps didn't work on uh, this area. And the uh, new generation, I mean the young generation, they, they didn't know how to read the map. They just uh, rely on a um, internet, on a uh, Google and uh, I say that uh, this action from uh, brave men the, it was very helpful also high school uh, high school children or college uh, uh, students what they did they patrolled the streets they looked for um, suspicious men who are on a roof of the buildings or just around the town to inform uh, the we have a special division uh, who will take actions uh, because it possible some of them they were spies uh, how the why because they also made this marks i mean spies all uh, russian spies they also made a, a signs from on a roof uh, of the buildings from this fluorescent uh, light and uh, the weapons uh, in the night time uh, they they had a uh, they had a um, they, were, they were providing uh, directions for the airlines the directions and airplanes. For, yes yes that's why they did this part of the job and uh, of course uh, uh, ukrainians who were abroad they also stand up they try to help they try to uh, the first it was uh, all of these demonstrations in every big city and uh, started to um, make donations monetary donations uh, and uh, what right now military and civilians need also different kinds of donations okay we'll talk about that in a minute okay uh, so the churches were making meals and pastors were out among the soldiers uh, helping them i think you told me and praying, uh, praying with them. Um, why is it important for the churches to provide a safe place? We, we, we've heard about uh, uh, bomb shelters and uh, you know where large numbers of folks have been, have been gathering in theaters and, and, and are being attacked. Uh, wh why is that important? I mean, aren't there places where people live that they can do that? That they can shelter? Do they have to leave home? Uh, yes, they have to leave home because it's not um, safe for them to stay in a building. They try to uh, constantly bombardized by Russians aircrafts. It make n not uh, sense to just stay at home. That's why they're looking for the shelters and where uh, the shelters are in the churches, in the hospitals, in uh, uh, schools, buildings. That's why it was the target number one. Uh, what I see that P Putin just want to wipe off the whole generation, the, all Ukrainians. Uh, and uh, by the way, one, I want to add uh, um, that uh, when they left their houses, people who was able to leave their houses, all of them, they went to the west, none of them to the uh, side of Russia. East to the east, yeah. And uh, what's happened on the checkpoints when Russian soldiers, Russian troops 
uh, what they doing. They taking passport of these women and uh, taking uh, telephone, their cell phones uh, away from them and uh, they send them to Russia and uh, right now it's a lot of children abducted. It's uh, um, around 2,000. I have the right number. I think you said 15,000. No, no, no 15,000 it was born. Well, that was babies who were born. Yes, yes, yes. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yes. It was uh, uh, 1,381 children uh, were abducted by Russians, and we don't have any further information what's happened. Um, and of course, moms goes with them because th they don't want to leave child alone in uh, um, foreign countries. Like for them, it's a foreign country, so Russia. They they don't want to be there but they go because of the uh, uh, children were abducted. Well, I, I, as, a, as a father and a grandfather, I, I just can't imagine what that must be like for folks you know, to, to lose their children and grandchildren that way. That's terrible. Um, sounds like the population is really quite involved uh, with this Yes, fight. yes, and uh, I, I wanted to also add uh, the city of Mariupol, when you heard about the city on the Azov Sea, it's a main uh, large port, main industrial steel city. Uh, it was bombarded constantly during two weeks completely. That's why you heard about this theater. People hide. It's right now 300 people dead. Uh, a lot of them, they tried to escape. It was difficult to escape because uh, constantly bombarded. They, they, they couldn't go. And who escaped? They told it. It was like a hell. Uh, they, they don't want to talk about this. They like in shock. Mm -hmm. uh, people without electricity, without water, without uh, mm, heat, and it was winter time, without internet connections. And uh, uh, when snow fell, they used uh, snow as a, uh, when it melted uh, as a water. There's, there's still a shortage of water, I understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, b because the uh, electrical power station, th they were bombarded, uh, bombarded too. That's why they didn't have access for uh, all of this so uh, utilities. You know, like other countries, we're pretty dependent on the infrastructure, on electric uh, to do what, to, to provide this resource or the source uh, for uh, pumps and, and, and so on to, to be able to get the water out of the ground and distribute it. Um, we hear hospitals being bombed and pregnant women losing their care. Yes, it's true. Uh, Fifteen, <coughs> excuse me, 15,000 babies were born during the period of the war. Um, and uh, only 800 babies were born in Kiev. A lot of them, they born premature. Doctors try to do the best uh, to... Uh, uh, support uh, the life of the children, but it's very difficult because generators are not working because uh, they don't have electricity anymore. Uh, usually the care is in a basement of the hospital to keep them safe. And the, uh, the problem that they are so much under the stress that young mother, they losing their milk to feed the babies. It's sad. It is sad. And, and we're seeing some pretty devastating and disturbing pictures on the news. Yes, yes, and exactly. These devastating pictures uh, encouraged me to start uh, collect a humanitarian help uh, to uh, send to Ukraine. So uh, you can find, Mike uh, mentioned earlier, uh, there's a list. There's a, there's a two-page list that you sent of medical supplies. We took a look at that list. We had some medical folks look at the list and highlight um, uh, those things that we could find. Um, many of the things on the list are just difficult for us to find. Um, uh, Jeanette and I talked yesterday, and we've added, uh, we've we've highlighted uh, the things there. But if you go to our website, MountCarmelUMC.org, uh, right at the top of the screen will be. Uh, a placard that 
this placard, collecting items for Ukraine, and a list of the things that we think are, are doable. And there may be folks that you know uh, that, uh, that could help out in this. Maybe they already have, but if they, if they haven't and they'd like to help us uh, 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 help uh, Janetta uh, get these supplies to uh, Ukraine, um, invite them to go there and, and take a look at what they, uh, what they might be able to do. Um, so our, our congregation uh, has been a, uh, a has been always about ministry to people. That's since I've been here. It's been ministry to people. That's that's a, it's it's a, a, I recently read a, a, a passage where uh, one of the uh, preachers in a large church uh, suggested that what Christianity is about is people. It's, it's about the uh, it's about you, not the view, and and uh, so that's where this congregation has been, and and we're grateful uh, for Kathy, who's our mission lead, uh, who uh, has has spearheaded, uh, and and Mike Nestor, who who's works with, uh, with with some other agencies, and and you've been tremendously generous here, and we want to challenge you uh, to be equally as generous over the next several weeks as we continue to hear this news of things that are needed immediately. Now. We're collecting the items, but how are they going to get to Ukraine? Are you going to drive them there? I wish. <laughs> yeah, I can drive only to Poland right now because it's dangerous in Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, um, oh, by the way, it's a news that uh, Polish airline, they allowed 10 bags for free of humanitarian help. Oh, great. It's great. I, I would like to do this if uh, the... I collect as much as possible. I, I w it was in my mind to go there, but also we have a, uh, one of the organizations, it's, uh, it's like logistics support with the uh, travel com uh, commun and communications. It's called MEEST, M-E-E-S-T, that um, delivered uh, packages from uh, uh, they have uh, they have a warehouse in New Jersey and they deliver to uh, Poland and from Poland Ukrainian trucks taking to the um, places where it's written on a box like if it's medical supplies they know that it goes to the hospitals if it's a, a bulletproof jackets or other ammunitions they, it goes to uh, on a uh, to the soldiers. Uh, even jackets, uh, because you know, like uh, the the warm jacket, it's still cold in Ukraine, and uh, they needed uh, some of the jacket. And uh, I, I, I would like, uh, and what I'm doing, helping, um, anyways, like d diapers, dry mi uh, milk, um, uh, also the um, freeze dry food. It will be helpful because it's require only hot water to put, and they already people eating. Uh, uh, the um, the most uh, what is needed it's um, uh, blood clotting products, uh, blood blood clot clotting clotting products, products and yeah. tourniquets. Right, and tourniquets. Yes. those are the most that are needed. the most needed. Right. Yes. Well, uh, I know you and Michael came in this morning and you brought a box about this big. And I want to tell you that our folks have already begun to respond when they, when they heard this. And what we have is not going to fit in your box. We're grateful for that. And we anticipate there'll be many more boxes that come. We want to invite the community to, um, to, to do that as well. You can, again, find that list at mountcarmelumc.org. Uh, and that'll take you right to our website. And beginning next Saturday, beginning next Saturday, uh, we'll have people here between 10 and noon uh, to receive items, and we'll also receive items on Sunday morning when we're when we're here in worship. Uh, so we want to we want to uh, uh, encourage you to do that. And if you'd like to get involved in the project, uh, perhaps uh, 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 helping us uh, pack or whatever we need to do, you can call us or uh, uh, just get or, or email us at info at mountcarmelumc.org and our uh, our layperson who monitors that the email will see that we get the information. Janetta, thank you. I want to encourage any of you, Janetta will, and Michael will be, will be staying with us through the coffee hour, uh, so there'll be opportunity for you to have conversation. It will take 
we'll take a microphone over so we can all hear uh, what, what she has to say in that kind of informal conversation. And for questions that, uh, that she and I didn't think about that you might have. So we want to invite you to do that. Uh, and, and by the way, let her get to the, to the uh, uh, pl please let her get to the fellowship hall first so we can get her a cup of coffee and maybe even a donut before you all get over there. Let's pray together. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over peace and war, for wisdom, for discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold them and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. I want to note that uh, I appreciate the Episcopal Church for providing us with that, uh, with that prayer. Each Sunday I stand before you and tell you what UMCOR is doing someplace or how your money is, is, uh, uh, is impacting people's lives around our world, locally and around the world. And we want to be, uh, we want to be mindful of, uh, uh, of that. But I hope you re realize it, whether it's money. And by the way, if you do make a donation in kind, we'll provide a receipt for you. You'll have to decide how much it's worth. Uh, but if you itemize your income tax, uh, it could be worth uh, substantial, depending on what you do. We'll provide a receipt that, that says you gave us, uh, and you have to fill out what it is uh, so that you can, you can have that for your records. But, but recognize that each one of those things you give, whether it's tweezers <laughs> or patches or tourniquets or holy gifts today, they're here. You bring them because you have a heart, a heart for others. And brothers and sisters in Ukraine today, but around the world, benefit from what you do. Thank you. Continue to be, to continue to have generous hearts. Continue to be faithful. Because as the scripture said, we live out our faith. It's what we do. It's what we do. How we value others. How we include others in our prayers. And in, 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 in our giving. And in our lives. For me, I guess, um, well, my, I, my heritage is not Ukrainian. My grandmother and grandfather came from Czechoslovakia at the turn of the last century. And um, for a long time, their families were behind the Iron Curtain. And, and so I have a, a heart for, for what's happening there. And the fact that I value freedom, the freedom that we share. And I value our decisions to help the people who are denied it. That's what our offerings do. Thank you. Let's receive and dedicate the morning offering. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Lord, we come with these offerings 
with thanksgiving, with praise for you, knowing that your presence is with us and with others who receive the offering, the benefits of the offering. Lord, uh, accept them, sanctify them, that your people, your people, may find help and hope as they search for home. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. As we, uh, this morning, as I was doing my devotions, this devotion, I, I read several devotionals every day, and this morning one in uh, the Upper Room Disciplines, which, uh, which I get uh, yearly, um, struck me as being germane. I want to read it as part, as part of our benediction. It's by K. Uh, Cherie Jones. She says, 25 years ago, on the fifth Sunday of Lent, our organization underwent upheaval. I worked for the General Board of Discipleship, now Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. That morning, our co-worker, Donna, went missing. Think of those children. It soon became clear that she had been murdered. Eight days later, on Monday of Holy Week, a beloved retired staff person named Bobby died of natural causes. On Wednesday, a co-worker named Virilia died of natural causes. The deaths of the three trusted colleagues and friends rocked the organization. The first response of the staff was to meet daily in worship. We affirmed God's faithfulness and lamented our loss. We prayed for Donna, her family, and those who had been searching for her. During Holy Week, we added the names of Bobby and Virilia to our prayers. We looked for ways to support their families and conversations were muted. Walking into the building felt like walking into a tomb. The words of the psalmist resonate. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Corporately, we had experienced God's faithfulness many times in the past, but we desperately needed God's help and faithfulness again. Help with our grief and with how to continue in ministry. Easter brought the new depth of hope and resurrection. God met us as we gathered weekly in worship and felt the prayers of so many people outside the organization. Slowly and surely, God gave us the help we needed and we experienced divine faithfulness anew. I remember the day when walking through the halls, I heard laughter once more. I knew we had turned a corner and I offered a prayer of gratitude for the faithful. This morning as I am a cognizant of the news, and I, as I hear about the deaths, and I know many in our I, I shouldn't say many, but there are members of our congregation who have had great losses over the last several years, one right after another. Uh, I think about this, and I think about those who are walking away from husbands, those who are walking away from their homes, homes that may not even exist, and the grief that they must be feeling, in shock, in grief. Keep them in your prayers, and let me pray this prayer, and then receive the benediction. Eternal God, thank you for your faithfulness in times of need. Be with those who need your help today. Amen. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and abide with you and go with you everywhere you go in every situation with every people you meet. And the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will sustain and uplift you. Amen.